This video was sponsored by Clothing Club Kids. I'm Linda Okwee, married with two kids, a four-year-old girl and almost two-year-old boy. I'm a nurse by profession. I was in school and uh, in my dormitory, all the ladies were talking about how painful like their menses were going down man. And I realized all of them were having their menses. So I was like, ah, my own has not come yet. So immediately I called my husband and I asked him, I have this app on his phone, a cycle bead. So I asked him to check the dates on the bead and then it was past 10 days. So I was like, really i'm in school so i told my friend about it and she was oh let's go and get a kit we went to the drugstore got one and then it was positive <laughs> i didn't know how to handle because i was in my first year and i didn't know how it would be like and then i never planned to be pregnant in school i just wanted to enjoy my pregnancy with my husband with that, uh, it threw my death. And so I called him and I told him, This is it. And he was like, I should tell my mom about it. I told my mom and I told my dad too about it. And they were cool with it. Initially, I wanted to stop schooling and then they were like, No, I should continue. I'll be able to handle it. So I went to the lab to check it finally to be sure of it and then when i go to the lab the lab technician was like in this school you can't carry pregnancy along and stuff so i was i was confused i said okay then let me talk about it with my dad i didn't even tell my husband about it i told my dad he was like don't dare touch that pregnancy and i said okay so that was how the first one was about the girl and then with the second one eh -heh, I was just sleeping. I just woke up and I was like, Nana, I'm pregnant. <laughs> I was just like in a dream feeling I was pregnant and then the other one was crying. So I just woke up and I said, Nana, I'm pregnant. It was like, how? You just woke up saying you are pregnant. And I said, yes, I think so. And I checked the dates. My date has passed. And I said, oh, I think I'm pregnant and it's true. That was how I found out. With the first one, I didn't really enjoy. The only enjoyment I had, everywhere you walk, like in that, I was calling enough. So they call us queens in their language. So anywhere I walk, if I'm going for my food at the canteen, in fact, they will serve the pregnant woman first before they will serve any other person. So I don't have to join a long queue to hurt myself more no. and then sometimes my friends would have to do that for me relax feel comfortable in my chair and then they would just bring my food mm -hmm. and with the second one i really enjoyed <laughs> because that one i was in the house and then anything i request for i get it With the first one, being pregnant and being in school, it was, it was really hard for me. Sometimes I have to wake up in the dawn to come to campus and then studying. I'll be in the house when I'm feeling hot in, in, in the class. I'll just say, well, let me go to the dormitory or a hostel. So I'll be in the hostel and be like, there's a lecture in class and I have to run. <laughs> and then there was this time, remember there was this time, I was in with my friend and then the lecturer came and somebody called us. The lecturer is in the class and we are having a quiz. I was running and she was like, can you run? And I said, stand there, I'll pass you. <laughs> I'll pass you and go and be fast. I left her behind. By the time she realized I was already in the class. So that was one of the hard things. And then with the second one, immediately I found out I was pregnant. That very moment, every every night, I feel pain in my abdomen. 
every night. And then, hmm, I'll be doing mm -mm, but nobody will mind. <laughs> For the first one, I <laughs> I was supposed to be in June. So the day passed. I think I was in my 41 weeks. So um, <laughs> I was going forth and back with my husband at the hospital. And then uh, during all that time, I was talking with my friend and she was encouraging me, oh, everything will be fine, everything will be fine. So I went to the lab and then uh, there was this woman telling me, this baby is really disturbing you when she comes, lash her bottles. <laughs> I just laughed at it because I was, everybody can see I was tired. See that little girl with that cute pregnancy. <laughs> I was really tired. So the nurse came and she was like, do you know it's, it's really painful? But before then, my mom told me, oh, it's not painful. It's just something like menses. I was like, oh, this one is just coming to scare me. She doesn't know I'm a nurse too. <laughs> so when I, I entered there, it was just like, it's painful. It's painful than normal labor. I was like, oh, really? Okay. I'll take it like that. And with the second one, I was, um, because of how uh, he too, his, he wasn't turning. He has to turn around that week. So he wasn't turning. And then I was asked to eat pineapple and other fruits and sit like how Muslims pray all the time. And, when, and whenever I'm sleeping, I have to hang my legs on the wall. For like about a month, that was what I was doing. I would sit like this if I'm eating. And if I'm sitting in a chair, I turn myself to face the chair. So I, with the second one, I was eating pineapple and I started feeling pains. So my sister was like, what is wrong with you? She just bought the pineapple for me. She was like, what is wrong with you? So I just feel like peeing. So I went, I came back. It was feeling normal. I came back and then I was going in and out and she was like, hey, if you know you want to give birth, tell me and you start packing things. <laughs> and I was like, oh, leave there, it's not time yet. After the medicine has been injected, um, I was told after every four hours, I'll come for another one. and. Um, after every four hours, I'll come for another one. So I was waiting for the next four hours. When in, when I went for the woman to put it there, she was like, I should wait, it's not time. If she puts it right now, come and disturb her and that. So I should wait. And I said, I'm ready. I'm ready to give birth. So I've come, I'm ready. She, she just injected and she said, okay. So she injected it and she went to sleep. And the four hours did not come. Around two hours, I started feeling pain. So I've been talking to my friend about it. She's, very, she's also a midwife. So she, she was with me throughout the night. She was calling me, how is it like? Like, are you feeling any pain? I said, oh, not yet. So after I finished talking to her, I started feeling the pains. And I called her back. I said, oh, I've still had feeling pains. And she said, okay, that is it. It has started. And the pain will not stop till you give birth. I was like, really? So I was feeling the pain. It was going higher and higher. And I called. She was like, just relax. Do anything that will. So I went to the nail. I was like, I want to take my bath. She said, oh, you can go under the shower. You are free to. I went under the shower. So the pain was so increasing and then my mom was standing behind the window she was not she was asked not to come inside so she was standing behind the window. She was like oh everything will be fine it's nothing <laughs> i was like this woman she doesn't know what i'm going to she said it's nothing so i felt like vomiting and then i told my friend that i want to vomit and she said oh i should vomit but initially i've heard if you vomit through your mouth when you are in labor after labor all your teeth will come down so 
I was really scared. I didn't want to vomit. So no, like I should vomit. So I vomited. Immediately I vomited the water book. And I went to the midwife. I told her about it. So oh, it's not time. Just go inside. <laughs> And I said, the water broke. I'm seeing blood in the water. And she was like, okay, come and sleep there. Let me check, bring your things. I went to sleep. She was like, okay, bring your things inside. You are 6 a.m. It's like, the water broke and I'm 6 a.m. Okay. So I brought my things inside and then I started from there. With the first one, after um, I was asked to bring my things, so because the pains I was already used to, I was already used to the pain, non-stop pain. So I was on the bed, and then I I told the woman, the midwife, I feel like pooping, and she was like, poo on the bed, <laughs> and I said. No, I can't do it. I want to get down from the bed and go to the. She said, No, if you get up from the bed, if you go inside the washroom, the baby will come. So, poo on the bed. Not only it was the baby that was coming. So, and I said, oh, I feel like pushing. <laughs> she said, Okay, wait, let me come and check. You just came inside. They were thinking um, it would take four hours, but mine took only two hours. So, because it took only two hours, they were thinking uh, I was rushing and I just wanted to push because I was feeling the pain. But I said, no, I want to push. So she came and checked and she saw I was full, 10 cm. And baby's head is already out. Mm -hmm. Then I had to push. They were asking me, push, push. And then I was trying my best though. Because I was a first time mother, I was giving a cut. Then I pushed. Baby came out and baby was not crying. Baby was already tired because it was 41 weeks and three days or so. So baby was baby was not crying. She was white. And then they were rubbing her back, trying all their possible bears. They called the Nico, asked them whether there was a free oxygen there that they can bring baby there. I didn't know what happened, but I think baby fell. So she had this. Um, break here and then her ribs but i was screwed with it though my baby is safe and crying now i was happy and then with the second one when the water broke in the house and i came they asked me to sleep and because it was green she just removed something from the womb around the womb just like okay now you are okay and it was 6 a.m. when I came in. So within 15 minutes, I told her, I want to push. And she was like, you just came. 30 minutes, Kara has not come. You want to push. You are just 6 a.m. You want to push. And I said, yes, I feel like pushing. And she said, wait, I'm coming. She was just going up. And I said, please, I said, I want to push. And she said, wait. I said, wait. So when she came and she checked, she said, oh, bring the things. And in my head, I was like, so you knew, you knew I have to push and then you were walking around and then push push baby came baby was okay just that um because of the stress so he was just green and then he, I, his eyes too were green because of the pee in the like For the first one, the girl, I was okay. Not all that happy, like, I was scared that maybe something will happen to her. But with the second one, I was really happy because we are just two girls and my husband too was born only one, he's the only person. And my dad really wanted a boy. So I also wanted a boy. When it came out, a boy actually, as the scan said, I was really happy. At first, I used to sleep a lot. And then I would sleep during the day. And at night, I'll be watching my phone, pressing, pressing. 
enjoying the day, I'll sleep. But when babies came, <laughs> you will sleep, even you will not sleep in the night, but you will still have to wake up in the morning to continue your duties. When I'm able to wake up in the morning and do my chores, I see I'm not feeling sleepy. I can sleep around five and still wake up six and continue with my chores. Sometimes it surprises me. And sometimes I have to carry both of them. <laughs> I have to carry both of them because when I finish packing the first one, the second one will be like, I should carry him too. So I carry this one, I carry that one. And I'll move them inside. Sometimes it surprises me the strength I get to do all that. And then even if you are sick, you have to do that. It feels normal when I'm sick and I'm doing it. And then with the first one, I wasn't with her because I was in school, so my mom had to take care of it. So when I came back and the second one arrived, I took both. It wasn't easy. I was like me giving birth to a fair, like me giving birth at the first time, like because the first one was not with me, I didn't know how motherhood was like. So the second one added that there was like me having a twin and it was not easy at all. Sometimes I think I don't know what I'm doing <laughs> because you go outside and a grown up mother will be like, your baby should do this. You have to do this. And I'll be like, so what am I doing? Am I doing the right thing? Will my babies like learn the right thing from me because I'll go outside and baby is doing something and another mother will be like do like this do like this and I'm like it feels I'm a child <laughs> I'm not a, a grown-up mother like I don't know not really just the breast no I have a sagging breast <laughs> But with my tummy, it goes back when after bed. So people will see me and they'll be like, mother of two, you see your stomach, mother of two, see your tummy. Even with that, you have not given birth. I said, that's how my body is like. And then sometimes I was conscious, I was conscious on what I eat because I didn't want, because of my body, I didn't want my stomach to be, your stomach is big, you have flat tummy. <laughs> You have flat butts and you are slim, like how you look like. So anytime I'm eating, I'm conscious. So with my sleep during the day, I don't get enough rest because for like even just yesterday, I was just sleeping and then the baby was awake. He just came, he'll wait when I close my eyes, then he'll just slap me. <laughs> then I have to wake up because he doesn't understand he's awake and I'm sleeping. So with the sleeping, I don't get enough sleep. And sometimes it's from me because sometimes I'll, I'll be on phone during the night that they were asleep, that I should be sleeping. Then I'll be on phone, pressing my phone. My, my husband will wake up and be like, won't you have some rest? Won't you have? I'll be like, oh, I'll just sleep. Sometimes I'll, I'll pretend I'm sleeping when he's asleep. I just take the phone and I'll be pressing, watching movies and stuff. So with the sleep, not really. <laughs> I just press my phone. But sometimes I, I get some rest. I'll press the phone and sleep like 30 minutes and he'll be up. So the time that I should be sleep, like when he sleeps and I'll sleep. No, I'll not do it. I'll press the phone now. So by the time I realize I have to sleep because he'll be up, I'll sleep like 30 minutes and he'll, he's up. For the first one, breast milk was not coming and then I was supposed to breastfeed that three days so that the baby would not get jaundice. So the nurses were on my neck 
and they would ask me to sit down whilst I'm, I'm having some sore at night. They would ask me to sit down, sit down comfortably. <laughs> I remember this in church. She would just push me in the chair. When I'm turning my buttocks like this, I like, sit down, wall. It's uh, sit down so that you'll be okay. And I'll be like, this woman, I'm really suffering. She's telling me I should breastfeed my child. So I'll try. And then the baby will just take the nipple and I'll just shout. It was also very painful. So after that, three days. And what really helped me was the baby was on oxygen for some days, so they, they were adding formula to it. They would add formula, and when baby really need breast milk, they will call me. I should come and breastfeed. So that was also helping me small. But with the second one, because first baby has already breastfed on it, I was cool with it. It wasn't all that painful. And first one, too, I have to express because I was in school. So I have to express, put it down. I'll come back around four. So I express and then put it in the fridge for some time. And then maybe we'll use it. And not all the time that I, because sometimes breast milk could be lesser. I'll use the one that is in the fridge. I didn't want to waste it. And it's painful expressing. So I didn't want to waste it. I'll keep it very well. And then maybe we'll still use it. When, when I wake up and I have to prepare baby's food, wash, clean the house, sometimes I'll be standing on my feet all day. I'll just put things here, then he'll just come and scatter. <laughs> you just arrange it. By the time you come back, everything has been scattered. I'll be like, ah. so I don't know. Sometimes I'll be like, how do I get the strength to do all that? Because you'll be tired after washing, then you just bring all the things from the dry line. Then you have to wash it again. You fetch water, put it down, and you just go and sit in the water. He'll just mess things up, pack my plates, and he'll just bring all them, all of them down. I'll be like, how will I handle this boy? Because <laughs> sometimes I just don't know. But I get the strength to do all that. If I'm going out, I have to take diaper, wiper. Then I'll take baby dress. I'll take baby food, baby water. And the bag is already full. You've not even had your things to it. The bag is already full. So sometimes it's very difficult when, when I want to go and show off at a place. Actually, I sell bags. So I have to display some of my bags, use them. but. Because of baby, I can't use small bags. I just have to use big bags. And I remember there was this time I have to, I, I wanted to use that particular bag. And it's very cute. Baby's diaper can't enter, but it's just small bag. So I didn't take anything. I was like, today I'll come back home early. So we are not taking anything. And that was the day he messed himself up. <laughs> Like how? Because I knew we weren't coming back early. I took a small bag so that I would feel comfortable carrying here and carrying there. So I just put him, put on a dress that he would also feel comfortable even when he messed up. And then we came back home. Hey, no, but <laughs> the other didn't have for them. Yeah, I just called them. He has a long name, so I just shot and then used one of them to call him. The most challenging part is when I'm alone. When I'm alone and all the two of them are with me, it's, it's very challenging because the girl is cool when she's alone. The boy is not cool when he's alone. So when the two come together, when the boy is doing it, the girl will join. <laughs> so when he says stop, the girl is doing. You come here, stop, the boy will start. And then when you are 
when I'm washing, I'll pack the things, put them down. And then the girl will come and sit on it. The boy will be throwing them away. So if my sister is not around, she has been very helpful. If she's not around, it's it's very challenging. Because and then the boy will be like, back him. You have to back him when he's crying. Do this for him. You have to stop what you are doing and attend to him. Sometimes I'll be cooking and if my sister is not around and I'm cooking, I'll leave the food on fire. I tend to, by the time I come back, it has turned to something else. Our mothers have really tried. They've done their best. I wish every child would appreciate their mother because if I look up at people who have given birth to like four, five, and they are okay, I'm like, just to and I'm sometimes crying. <laughs> but sometimes if I'm stressed up and then when they are stressing me up and I'm already stressed up, I just start crying. <laughs> I just tell myself I can't do this work. It's it's too much for me. And then when my husband comes from back from work, I'll be like, You've left everything, you've left everything on me. I just can't. I just can't. So if we go outside then people are like Hurry up and add one to it, and I'll be like, You don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> the second one is like three, <laughs> so I just can't add one to it now. So, mothers, mothers have really tried, they've done well. This video was sponsored by Clothing Kids Club.